All right. So anyway, here's some ways to improve your muscle testing. Number one, don't expect anything. Be okay with any answer that may come, okay? Because what happens if you're expecting an answer to be a certain way? Let me tell you a true story about what happened. Um, I have seven children. Let's have a moment of silence for my, my poor wife. <laughs> but anyway, we had twins. Mm, sorry. We had twin boys. They're now 24 years old. But we already had two girls. We had Natalie and Christy, and they're here working. And, um, and about six months after that, well, there's about a three-year span where we don't remember anything. <laughs> and I mean, I do remember one event where the twins were about three years old, and they got into my wife's lipstick. We had white shag carpet in our bathroom, and they ground all the lipstick into the carpet. It took us like, I don't know, like three days to clean that if it was a nightmare. And then they did it again. That's all I remember. But sometime during this period, she was just feeling like, that's it, I'm done, I'm not having any more children, we are done. And all of a sudden, she had this feeling come over her, and in her mind, she saw two kids. And one of them was Elizabeth, who's here, with her little tiny, you know, she's 13, right? She's here working. Uh, and, and Jean was able to feel Lizzie's feelings, and she was like, she was feeling like, oh my gosh, you mean you're not going to have me? So immediately, Jean's heart melted, and she said, okay, all right. And so after a while, Jean got pregnant. And we thought, okay, that's got to be that girl that you saw, right? And so we knew it had to be her. We were convinced, right? It had to be her. So the muscle testing, now by the way, listen, when I was in practice, I used to have women come to me to be muscle tested to see what, the sec what sex their baby was going to be. And it was, I was about 98% accurate, right? Which is probably at least as accurate as ultrasound, right? <laughs> So, so anyway, so I started testing my wife. You know, after about three months, about the end of the first trimester, you start getting clear answers about what the sex of a baby is going to be. During those first three months, it's kind of iffy. You know, is it a boy? Is it a girl? Yes, yes. It's just weird. But then it solidifies after about the end of that first trimester. And so I tested her, you know, frequently, or at least a number of times, and it was going to be a girl all the way along. Okay, and so. So we were going to have her at home. We had a midwife, right? And uh, everything went fine. The baby was born, and I'm right there, and I've, I've got the baby, Elizabeth, right? And at a certain point after, you know, a minute or so, I decided, okay, well, I better open up her legs, you know, and just make sure everything looks normal, right? And it was Joseph. <laughs> and I'll always remember that moment, you know, like, What? Wait, wait a minute. We've been had, right? So, so that was Joseph, yeah. So then, uh, after another couple of years, Jean got pregnant again, and we thought, okay, well, for sure, this has got to be Elizabeth, right? And, um, but I learned from that experience, you see, that, you know, my wife was convinced this was going to be a girl. I was convinced it was going to be a girl. So it was apparently too hard for us to be objective with the muscle testing, so all the muscle testing responses were, oh yeah, it's going to be a girl. Because the subconscious mind wants to, it's like a puppy, it wants to please you. And so if you have an agenda and you want it to turn out a certain way, guess what? It's going to make it come out a certain way because that's what you really, in your heart of hearts, that's what you want. So you have to kind of be careful of that, see. You want to be open and let whatever answer comes. Does that make sense? Well, so the next kid, actually, we thought that was going to be her, but we were now a little more leery about the testing and trying to be more open, and that turned out to be Ian, <laughs> who now is like 185 pounds and about six foot and plays rugby. So that wasn't Lizzie, but then Lizzie finally came along. So, so anyway, now you can muscle test to see what food your body wants each day, and this can be the most difficult thing of all to be objective about, <laughs> right? Well, I get that my body wants pizza. <laughs> I get that. I test that. My body likes haagen but that particular kind, you know, it's hard. This can be really hard. And you know what I found? Let me tell you something. Uh, I started really practicing this lately, 
Um, and I've lost about, I was 186 pounds about three weeks ago, but about 170 today. And it was by just tuning into this. Yeah, thank you. It actually wasn't very hard. I just actually decided, you know, I'm going to really test and see what foods I really should eat. And so I've basically been off all grains for the last three weeks, right? And uh, I found that I can make a meal out of a peanut, practically. Well, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But, you know, I just eat some nuts during the day if I get hungry and, you know, have watermelon and fruit and things like that that are actually healthy. The general rule here is if what you're eating has a label that needs an explanation, yeah, you probably don't want to eat that. You can test yourself to see if your body really wants it, but again, be careful. You know, my body wants chocolate, a pound daily. That can happen. So anyway, removal of imbalances can definitely help your muscle testing clarity. Does that make sense? How many of you have seen that happen? Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Okay. So muscle testing, I believe, is a gift from our creator to help us to heal ourselves and each other. Okay? It's for accessing information from the subconscious. It's not for winning the lottery, right? How do I know this, you may ask? How do I know this? Well, when I was first learning about this, and I first realized, wow, all the information is out there in the universe. You know, past, present, and future, they're all the same. Every winning lotto number, every winning lotto number is already, oh my gosh, they're already out there. All we have to do is tune in. So I had this buddy, he and I, you know, tried this. and. It, it didn't work. If it had worked, would I be here speaking to you? No. <laughs> I'd be broke somewhere, wondering why it didn't work. So anyway, it's also not for determining the future, okay? How many of you have tried to determine the future using, well, I have tried to do this, you know. It, it's not for that, okay? It's not for determining the future. It's also not for making important decisions about your life, job, relationships, it, it, you know, etc. Should I marry Jim and move to Dubuque? I can't, you know. You don't want to get answers that way on muscle testing. This is for each other, to help each other with our health, okay? Now, let me give you a little clue, okay? I've gotten many, many answers to prayer over the years. If you want to get answers from up above to guide you, I promise you, if you, if you ask for help, you will get it. What's the old scripture? What does it say? Ask and you shall what? Receive. You'll receive, and that's absolutely the truth. Absolutely the, uh, the most true thing ever said. When you're trying to get an answer about something, okay, if, some, if you should do something or not, or if it's right or not, here's what you do. Here's what I have found, okay? You ask for help about that, okay? And then you listen and tune into your own feelings. If you have peace about that thing, if you feel peaceful about it, it's the right way to go. If you feel anxiety about it at all, it's not the right thing. That's as simple as it is. Does that make sense? It's so simple, really. But muscle testing about those things, I don't recommend.